Hi everybody and welcome back to the engine house. I'm your host Gandy Dancer and of course you can see the our, our dogs here. Uh, they're very curious as to what's going on. Got a little something here, a little unboxing. Um, I took it out of the box it came in, left it here. A couple things in one of the videos I mentioned that uh, I had been a torpedo man pretty much the entire decade of the 80s. So I'd been in the Navy. I was a Mark 46 Mod 5 tech, which was surface torpedo. What I never mentioned was many years later, because of my years in Naval service after 9-11, I went back in the reserves. And at that point, due to my uh, training as a driver, truck driver, the Navy decided I'd make a better CB than a torpedo man. <clears throat> and uh, I ended up spending nine months in the Persian Gulf and uh, seven months between uh, Balboa Naval Hospital and San Diego, and uh, to which I was medically retired after 15 years total service at 100% disabled. What I had been looking for was something to kind of commemorate my naval service, and I found this. It's a set from 2012, the uh, U.S. Navy freight set. And uh, I picked it up. It's the last thing I'll be buying here in Idaho. Uh, we did close on a house in, on the East Coast. And uh, we'll be moving there again as soon as we can get out of here. Uh, we're still, again, I'm off grid. We're off grid. Um, we still have <clears throat> quite a bit of snow out here. And uh, moving is going to be a little difficult. We hope to be out of here soon. Anyway, I did get this, and again, it's the last thing I'll be buying here. The wife said nothing more until we're moved. This is the uh, certificate of authenticity for the uh, set. This is 2012. And, of course, there's a uh, book back here with all the uh, instructions and things and, and uh, how to make everything work and all of that. <clears throat> So, we'll go through some of this. I'll set that aside. We'll start. Oh, the shop cat made an appearance. Wouldn't you know it? She must have heard I replaced her with the moose. To start here, we have the caboose. There was a number I heard that was a double stamp here. The, the minus uh, 200 had been double stamped on a box. Nobody knows for sure who got that set. Uh, it's probably worth a lot of money with the double stamp, I guess. There's a lot of people wondering who got it. Um, unfortunately, I did not get it. <laughs> I kind of wish I had, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. You know, pull this out. And this is the caboose. And it is lighted. There are contacts here for the rails, so it will be lit as it's going down the down the track. Uh, it's very nice, very nice actually. I'm kind of impressed with that already. Um, metal trucks. They make these things kind of like they did way back in the day. Still. Okay, kitty, you got to move. And we'll set these boxes aside. <clears throat> This is the Minuteman missile launching car. And I don't know much about this. I looked at quite a few different sets online before I settled on this one. This one had the most uh, that came with it. And so I kind of got this one. This is the Minuteman car. And this, I guess, when you hit a certain point in the track... Um, this will pop up, and I guess you can fire it. I don't know for sure how that works, but this will, I guess, fly off. Um, it has a, a launcher thing here, so I guess it will launch. Um, remains to be seen as to now, of course, oh, there we go. That slides right down on that, just like that. Um, <laughs> once I get it set up somewhere, uh, this is 2012, and most of what I have, 
is uh, post-war to uh, 1940s, 1950s. So I'm going to have to figure out how to make all this stuff work together. And we'll see how that turns out. Anyway, that's the Minuteman car. And the missile, of course, is going to pop out of there. This is the helicopter launching car. You can actually launch the helicopter from the uh, flat car here. This is going to be kind of interesting. This is uh, this is uh, the launching port, and I guess you wind this. And of course, the uh, here's the helicopter, which has got to sit here, and I don't have my reading glasses on, and so there we go. That must sit there, and then over here on this side, there is a launch button, and when this is wound up, you push this down, and this is supposed to fly off. I'm not going to do it here, because I don't want to get the dogs all wound up, but helicopter's not quite the scale, but it's okay. It's still a nice little piece, and next... I love when people send these things. They really know how to pack them. Next is the flat car with the operating submarine. It's another very interesting piece. Whoops. Sorry, Jade. St. Bernard over there checking out the stuff. Here is the sub. And my understanding is, this of course comes off, and you would wind this. There's rubber bands, I think, in here. Yes, you can, you can it can be kind of hard to see with the light, but there is a rubber band set up in there. And you would um, wind that up, and let's see if I can make the propeller. If the propeller turns. You put this in some water. And there you go. Okay. <laughs> Quite an interesting little piece. Um, I don't know if I'll ever put it in any water, but you never know. You might find We might find out. Um, I don't know. Again, that sub isn't exactly a scale with the uh, U.S. Navy subs, but as a mini sub, it works pretty good. I think that's kind of nice. Now we'll move on to the <clears throat> the B unit here for the. This will be, by the way, the first and maybe not the last diesel electric locomotive I have on my layout. I prefer steam myself. Um, but as they didn't have a commemorative steam in the U.S. Navy, I decided to go with the diesel electric. It's based on it's based on the fact that I can't. Oh, it's the box is caught. The box is a little damaged here. You can see, um, but it's whole anyway. This is based on the early diesel locomotives of the 1950s. There's the B unit. That's actually quite heavy. Um, quite a nice, quite a nice piece, actually. I'm very impressed with that. And that would be this is the B unit, or you know, in a in a as we all know, this would be it's a dummy unit. There's no motor in here. Were this a real unit, this would be an extra motor, diesel electric, to help the freight along. And now we have the locomotive and not knowing much about diesel locomotives I couldn't tell you what kind this is I know they have different designations for the diesels rather than the steam I'm more familiar with steam and the wheel arrangements um, not a hundred percent sure 
I know this is a certain type. Uh, I'd have to look it up, but I'm not 100% sure. Again, this is, would be from the 50s. It's modeled after a locomotive of the 50s or the 60s. Um, this is, of course, the A unit. And, of course, the contacts. And here it's got a screw for volume control, and it has sound. Um, it has a button to lock it to only go forward or one where you can make it go either direction. Um, I believe there's controllers that you have to use to make this one. This will be the first locomotive I've, I own that uh, I believe the horn might work with the horn button on the, uh, the old transformers, but I'm not 100% sure. I believe this also has the diesel sound with it. And that's something I don't think will happen with the uh, what I have. So I'm going to have to do some looking and see, make these, combine these sets. But anyway, this was the, uh, something I'd been wanting. I've seen it, and it kind of commemorates my naval service. So um, I went ahead and bought it. And then, of course, the wife said, no more until we get to our new house. Um, so... This is probably the last thing for now, and of course, being as these are brand new, they don't even look like they've been run. I won't need to do anything with these other than put them on the track and see how they handle. Um, that's going to be quite interesting to uh, to run them. I'm looking kind of looking forward to setting them up. Anyway, that is it um, for this video. Uh, Again, once we get moved and settled into our new house, uh, the basement is finished. That's my train room. I'll be doing a lot more than just cleaning up and working on old locomotives, even though I kind of enjoy that. But there will be um, buildings built, scratch built. There'll be uh, uh, track scenery and, of course, working on the locomotives and whatnot, which I really enjoy doing. I have some... Uh, S gauge and let me uh, line these up for you just so you can kind of see them all together I don't have any track out here of course but uh, we have the engine and the V unit we have let's put this Whoops, <laughs> let's, let's drop the helicopter. Let's put this here. And the Minuteman missile launcher here. And kind of swing this. I'm just going to set this on here for now. And we've got sub and I won't put the caboose on there we'll just leave the caboose right there and there we have it um, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this set too and again this will be uh, part of the layout when I get to that point when I'm making a layout um, a lot of time it'll probably set on a shelf on some tracks and uh, wait for me to take it out and run it. But this is to commemorate my naval service, my 15 years in the Navy. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. And again, there probably will not be anything else. Uh, once we leave here, we're traveling by motorhome because of the dogs and the cats. And uh, we'll be taking our time. Uh, 25 years of truck driving, I passed a lot of stuff on the highways that uh, I wouldn't mind stopping and seeing. So we're going to take our time going across the country, and it'll probably be sometime in June before I shoot another video. But you never know. I wasn't planning on shooting another one until I got this. So you never know. But anyway, that's it for now, and uh, I hope you enjoy, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.